my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, and we have our work cut out for us once again. We have a nice old fiddle, and uh, it's an old one. It's got a label in here of the fellow who repaired it. His name was uh, Louis Albers, and it was in St. Louis, Missouri. The cool thing about this repair was the repair was 1889. That was a little bit before my time even. That's a long time ago. That was the repair. So guess how old the fiddle is. Actually, if I was guessing, I'd say the fiddle is not a lot older than that. I would actually think the fiddle, if I'm just, you know, looking at it in my experience, and I'm I'm not the end-all be-all expert, but I I've been around, I kind of know what these things are and what I'm dealing with. My guess is the fiddle's probably from the 1860s, 1850s, somewhere in there. I don't think it's a lot older than 1889. Yeah, that's my guess. It's a Stradivari copy, but it, I'm not sure where it was made. You know, looking at it, I would say it was European made. I honestly don't know, but if I was guessing, I'd almost guess it was a German made Stradivari copy. But that's just a guess, total guess on that part. We're gonna uh, do quite a bit of work on this, I, th I think. Uh, the fellow that owns it wants it up in pretty darn good shape. So we'll see how far we have to go with that. I gotta be honest, somewhere along the line it was repaired on this back seam and it's not even. I wish that was better, but in order to make that better, we'd really have to do a lot of damage to it, to be honest, and I'm not sure we're gonna fix that. I'll have to talk to the owner again. There's been a little bit of a cobbled up mess right in here. I don't know how well the camera will focus on that. You can see the purfling there doesn't match across there. This has been broken off. For my money, the neck angle's a little low. The bridge has been cut way down. I'd like to see a taller bridge on a nice old violin like this and get that neck angle correct. So, I, you know, I think we really do have our work cut out for us to make it up in really nice shape. The fingerboard itself, I think it's showing up there that it's been cracked and broken. You can see the crack across it there and the crack goes all the way through down on the sides here. You can see on both sides, it goes all the way through. In other words, the fingerboard itself is in two pieces. It's been glued back together. It doesn't quite match up back here on the fingerboard either, although it's not far off, but you can feel it that it doesn't quite match up. You know, having said that, honestly, the thing is probably playable right now in this condition. I could probably set it up and play it but apparently the owner wants it better than that. He wants it, you know, pretty nice. If I thought this was a really super valuable violin, I would probably decline the job and say, no, you really need to take this to one of those specialist violin shops. I'm on the fence on it, myself, to be honest, right now, because it is a nice old violin, but on the other hand, I don't think it's got that kind of value. I think it's a decent, you know, valued violin and we'll try to treat it with as much respect as we can. But I will use the methods that I use, you know, to repair it. And we'll just see where it takes us. Hope you uh, enjoy the ride. In addition to this old fiddle that we're going to restore, there's two bows with it. This bow here, I don't think is anything super special. It looks like a decent bow. You know, they call it an octagon stick, or a lot of people call it that, but it's really a hexagon stick. It looks to be fairly decent wood. It's not a cheap bow, I don't think. So this bow is, is possible to rehair this one and get it going. This bow is kind of a combination hexagon to round. And, you know, I don't know if this bow is anything special or not for sure. Although it's got this more like ivory type frog tensioner here. I can't think of the name for the screw here, but anyway. The problem with this bow is the uh, tip has been replaced with this, which I don't think was original. Uh, I have a feeling this was a repair deal to put on here is what I'm thinking, but I don't know that for sure either. It could have been original, I guess. 
but what I'm looking at here is it looks like the frog is broke here under the ferrule. I don't know how bad that is, whether or not this could be repaired or not. I don't think this is real ivory based on what I'm seeing, although it could be. It kind of looks like it is, but definitely it's broken off right around the uh, ferrule here. So I don't know how much trouble it would be to make this one work. I would prefer to get this one going if I could. I don't know, with all the miscellaneous here, it's, it's going to be kind of a toss up and I'll just have to back up five and punt and see what happens. I'm able to get bits of this apart. Um, I got the ferrule apart, separated from the little wedge that goes in there to spread the hair. This bit of plastic or ivory, whichever it is yet, and I still haven't tested it to know which one. I'm imagining it, it's plastic, I, it's what I'm imagining. But anyway, I got that bit out of there as well. They've really glued up the end of it here a lot. There's just lots of glue and I can't get the slide out and the slide is cracked. I don't know how far back in it's glued, but it's not good. So I'm going to work on this for a little while off camera, trying to just pick the glue out of there, see if I can't get this slide out and see how bad all the rest of it is here. Like I said, this bow may not be as good as it looks. It's really hard to tell. I'm trying to find a name on here. I can see this bow has been rehaired a bunch of times. A lot of the guys put marks on the stick, uh, and I see a bunch of marks here, but they're really covered over. It looks like it's been refinished since it was rehaired. I don't know if you can see those marks or not, but they put hash marks, and then they cross those over. Better example is right here. You can see it on this one. That typically means they've been rehaired a number of times. This one's got a bunch of those marks, so I have a feeling this has been rehaired a lot. Therefore, I have a feeling this could be the original bow. It looks like it's been around a while. This uh, screw that's in here is really tight. I've been working on it for a while, and I think I've just about got it out now, about loose. There it goes. It's pretty rusty. That should let that come off of there. Yes, it did. I don't see any real damage to the stick here. Obviously, the tip here is a messed up. I don't like how they fit this on here. It doesn't fit right to me. If you look, there's kind of a hump. It comes up and then it goes down again. The metal part does. So it's not done real well. If I'm gonna reuse this, I'm gonna put it back on at the proper angle. So that means I'll have to cut a little bit more of this stick off to get the angle right. I can't see doing this and restoring it and having the tip bent down at an angle. That would just be bad. As I say, it is what it is. I didn't create all these problems. I'm just trying to fix them. We'll see how far I can get with this. It may not be far, because this looks pretty bad. I resorted to my Dremel tool with the tiny little cutter to cut just the glue and tried not to touch this frog itself. And I think I was successful. When I got down to the real detail, then I went back to the X-Acto knife and picked out the glue right there in the corners. Then I grabbed a hold of the end of this slide with these pliers and started pulling and I moved it. You can probably see how far it's moved there at the end. There's a little gap. So I got it moved that far. I'm going to see if we can pull it out on camera here the rest of the way. I'm not sure if it'll come or not. It's pretty tight and quite frankly it's hurting my hand like crazy to try to hold that. It's real close to coming. As I mentioned before, my dad always says, don't force it, get a bigger hammer. I felt like I was forcing it with those little pliers. So we'll get a bigger hammer here and see if the bigger hammer uh, does it without forcing. There you go. This shell is mounted in a, I would call it a copper slide. The end of this copper was all bent up and messed up and I flattened it back out, straightened it out. And I still think there's some pieces messed up on this slide. You can see it's kind of dented and messed up a little bit. Indention on the back though, maybe on purpose to give the hair some clearance. So I'm not gonna deal with that too much right now, set it aside. Now here's what the uh, inside of the uh, frog looks like where the hair goes through. There's a little block of wood there, which is typical uh, to lock the hair in place. And I'll see if it'll come out and it did. However, 
this wasn't in there correctly at all. This should have been in the very bottom of that hole and that block of wood should have been retaining that down in there. This was actually right on the outside edge. So this wasn't really installed very well or definitely slipped over the years. And then there's some more glue in here that we will cut away. We really do have it cleaned up fairly well now. There's still a lot of little glue residue. There's a lot of glue down in the hole here. This really shouldn't be glued in. I, I go back and forth on that. I see people gluing them in and I've seen a lot of them already glued in and some of them is glued with resin or rosin and some of them are glued with hide glue and things like that. I try not to glue them at all if I can because they should be able to be put together without any glue. You know, if everything fits really well, then you shouldn't need glue at all. I won't lie and say I've never used glue, because I have. I try to get them fitting well enough where you don't have to do that. Part of the reason that slide was messed up, there was old creeping crud down in the slot of this slide area here of the frog. And I don't know if it's glue or just other junk, but there's a lot of stuff in the actual, um, I guess you'd call it a dovetail slot. It's cleaned out fairly well now, so the slide will probably go back in there better now. If that's the case, this slide should go in there fairly easy now. And it does. It wasn't too hard to get in there. And I can probably pull it out by hand. Yep. So we've made a little bit of an improvement there so far. I kind of think this is broke too far to fix it. It's hard to say, though. I might be able to salvage it. I'm going to clean up these parts here now and see if there's any way to put this back together or if it's just a lost cause. So I thought it would be nice to know are we dealing with plastic or are we dealing with ivory and it, I honestly still don't know. It, it's really hard to say. My vote is plastic. I kind of think it's plastic but here we go. We're going to try a heat test and see. Well, I think that tells me it's a plastic, but I think it's a f those early plastics that I think actually will burst into flame. Good thing I didn't put a flame directly on it. It's definitely that kind of plastic that is very, very flammable. Super flammable, in fact. It's definitely broken pretty badly. I don't think there's any reasonable way to get that to stick, though I will try super glue on this and see if that's going to hold. I may be able to tie a little uh, piece across the crack there and uh, tie it together, but I couldn't do that I don't think until I actually get it held in place. Once I get it held in place I might be able to do that and make this piece strong enough to reuse it. I kind of think I have a way I can do that, so I'm going to see what happens with that. i got to get it a little more cleaned up, a little bit better fitting yet, and uh, then we'll try CA gluing it back in place and see how the rest of it goes. I'm holding the frog in the vise. I've got the little piece that's broken off ready to go back on there. I have cleaned it and fitted up both sides of it as good as I can fit them and clean them. And as I say that, I think I see, from this angle, see a little bit more glue right there. Old glue, that is. That might have been something that was good. Yeah, I think that was good to get that off of there. I think it fits even a little bit better. The trick is how to hold it, get the CA glue on it, get it lined up, spritz it with the accelerator, how to do all of that in one take here. Because you don't have a lot of time to monkey with it. I'm going to see if I can do it like this. Ah, it was almost there. It was so close. I think I got it just about where I wanted it. CA glue goes everywhere faster than you can even imagine. Now I'll have to clean off the extra CA glue that went everywhere, but Aside from that, I think it went pretty well. So my plan is, now that you, you can see how I've got that glued back in place, it's pretty close to original. And in fact, these two pieces that stick out, 
I'm not surprised that they're there. I've seen that on other ones before. You know, it looks to me like they broke off of this, but I'm not so sure they did. It may have been carved back a little bit and those may have just been left extending there. I'm not really sure about that. Either way, what my thought is, now that I've got it lined up pretty well, I can kind of inlay a piece of plastic across this joint right here, CA glue it in, and I think it'll be very strong. Maybe not quite as strong as the original, but very nearly as strong. I'm gonna work on that a little bit off camera, trying to get me a little trench made in there where I can put a piece of plastic in there, or maybe even wood. Something that will stick in there real well. Not sure this will show up much, but there's a little groove down inside of here. The groove is, oh, I don't know, eight or nine millimeters long, probably. I've thickened a piece of deer antler that would fit down in that slot. I was trying to find a piece of plastic or some plastic-like substance, and I know antler glues really well with the CA glue. And I know this plastic seems to glue really well with CA glue, so I think the two would be a good marriage. I think the uh, bone is strong enough to go across that span and give it some additional support. It's tricky cleaning this little slot out well enough to get, you know, enough antler in there. But I think we've got it pretty close. And so what I'm going to do now is saw off this little chunk of antler here to about the approximate length. I've already got it thicknessed to the approximate thickness that I need. There it is. Getting it to fit down in there and be airtight is my next goal. And it actually looks pretty good already. So I don't know, it won't be too hard I don't think. I probably should have done this before I cut it off, just thinking about it. Rounding off these edges with a little file. I don't think the hole is perfectly square. I think it's a little more round on the edges. That seems to be going down in there pretty well. Almost well enough to stand up on its own. But not, not real good. Well, I think I'm going to work on that slot a little bit more with the Dremel tool. Because I, I think I can go a little deeper with the slot. Then see if I can feed this through there. I don't want to go all the way through the plastic, but most of the way through, I think it'd be good. I went a little deeper there. That's good, because I could, I think the depth is a good thing. Gives me a little bit more contact on the sides. Let's see if the part goes down in there better. Not too much yet. I think the ends need a little work. I think the ends of this piece of antler need to be cleaned up a little bit. Or maybe the easy way would just be to make the ends a little bit longer in the plastic. Gotta be getting pretty close there. I think we're in there deep enough now to make it work turn it over and see if it fits better with the bigger edge now that I've got made the hole bigger. I think the bigger edge actually fits better now. That's pretty good. I think that's solid. Now the trick is trying to cut off some of this antler before I get it in there. I don't want to, I can cut it, trim it down with the Dremel tool after I get it in there. That kind of shows you how deep it's going into the uh, thing there. It's not going in real deep. You know, that's a millimeter or better, or a millimeter and a half, I would say, maybe two millimeters, into the piece. With the CA glue packed in around it and everything, I think it's going to be pretty solid. I'm going to cut it off a little bit and get her glued in place. I have the little piece down in there now, and it's fitting pretty well. I'm going to just put a drop of CA glue on there, and it'll flow all over the place, I'm sure. Like already, it's missed where I want it to go twice. I don't know if any got down in the groove or not. Yeah, it did. The piece jumped out of the groove. But now I've got it down in there. And I think it's in there solid now. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I'll give that a little bit of time to just set up and get real firm and then I'll take the Dremel tool and clean that up real nice and it should just be very solid I think. 
that got it fairly smooth. Now I'm going to see if I can do the rest with some files. Take these odd shaped files here and get into this. These are little rasps and I think they'll go right in here and clean this up and make it perfectly smooth. Looks like they're doing the trick to me. I'm just cleaning up the little bit of extra glue that got in there. That's pretty darn level. And you know, I think that's really solid. It's more solid than it looks. I don't know if I should try picking up the whole vise with it, but I think it would. Let me try. You can see I'm pick, picking up the whole vise with it there, the end of the vise. So it's, it's pretty solid. I don't think that's going to come off of there. I'm kind of amazed that I was able to uh, find a way to strengthen that, but I'm pretty sure that's as strong as, almost as strong as it was new. Not quite maybe, but pretty darn close. It will allow us to use this frog now and make a good bow out of this again. Now that I've got that little part strengthened up, the ferrule has seen better days too. You can probably see the ferrule here has been flattened and dented there. That should be a perfect arch and it's kind of got a flat spot in it. One of the ways you can fix something like that, I've learned over the years, you can take a piece of leather, lay it down, lay your metal on top of the leather, find something round to put in here, and I don't know what that will be yet. Let me look here and see if I can find something about the right size. I just found this punch. That'll work. It wasn't what I was looking for, but I'm going to put it right over that flat spot. Again, the flat is down here on where it should be round. So I'm going to put this right over that flat spot, put it on top of the leather like so, push it in there a little bit. But the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this punch on top of the leather and hopefully it'll pull that flat spot down. I'm not hitting the metal, you know, I'm not hitting the ferrule, I'm hitting the punch. At least that's the intent. And I can't do it with that. I'm going to have to do it with, a, with this actual hammer here. So here we go. Yeah, that improved it a tiny bit. Try it just one more hit, I think it's going to do it. That might have been too much. Hit it a little hard. That's pretty darn close. You can see now that it's pretty darn round. If anything, it's still got a hair of a flat spot in it, just a hair. So I'll try it one more time, press my luck. Got to put it right over here on the edge. That's pretty good. You know, that's about as good as we're going to get it, I imagine. The next thing I want to do with this ferrule is fit it up better to the frog here. You can kind of see there's kind of a gap between the ferrule and the frog, it doesn't match up perfectly. And it does need to match up perfectly in order for it to look like a real well-made frog. So I'm just gonna take the file here and file back to where I think the problem is. Try to file a straight edge into it so that the ferrule can butt up solid to the frog. And these ferrules are usually worn on the front end that goes out to the hair, and I can see that there. So I've got the worn end out toward the hair, the straight end back toward the frog. In other words, these corners are generally worn off from playing. That's pretty close. That's it's a definite better fit than it was, but I'm still not completely satisfied with that. It's got a little bit of a gap right in here yet that you can see. And it's a minor thing, but you know, for it to look good and for it to be a real well-made frog, it needs to be just almost perfect. So let's try that one more time. That's a little bit better. I'm splitting hairs because it's pretty darn good. But I can still see little problems. If you can see the problem, it can surely be fixed. Okay, and some of the problem I think lies on this side actually now that I look at it. Because it's not letting it butt up flat here. There we go. See if that fixes it. I think that did it. That's fitting up pretty darn snug now. 
that's pretty darn good. I, you know, I am sure under a microscope it could probably be a little bit better. Not too many people I know look at things like this with a microscope, so I think we're okay. I see a little glue and junk that I'm just cleaning up here, and this is just mostly totally cosmetic stuff. One more fit up, and I think that's it. Now the ferrule itself is dirty. I'm going to see if we can't clean it up too. And the way I'm going to do that is just hold it here. I've got a brass file. I don't think, I don't know if the brass file will clean it up well enough. I may have to go to steel. You know, I'm really being anal about it, but this, there's still a slightest flat spot right here. So I'm going to hit it one more time. See if I can knock that little flat spot out of there. Should be possible. I don't want to hit the brass. I think that's pretty good. I think I could maybe hit it one more time yet in one more spot right there. That looks pretty good. Now, on this front edge of the brass that's out toward the hair, I'm going to clean that up. It's had a little bit of issues over the years, you can tell. People have not treated it so kindly. I'm going to try to clean that up. And I think that did it. And then where these corners are typically worn, I'm going to kind of round that off a little bit just because I know it, get, it can get sharp on your fingers. It shows signs of wear there, but not that much. I think that'll do it. Okay, now that's just about as good as it gets. Now we've got that little slide piece to work on and see if we can clean it up and make it a little bit better because it's not in the best shape either. So let's see how that looks. It's got some issues right here on the front. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be like. I think that's supposed to slide under the ferrule. Well, I know it is. Let's just see what it looks like when we get it in here, if it lines up correctly. Actually, it's not going in there now. I think the CA glue got in there on me, as I was telling you earlier. So let me clean that slot back up a little bit. See if it goes in there now. I think it's going to. Yep, it does. And then we put the ferrule on here, and this should all line up. It should just, but it doesn't. Here, how the ferrule now, it can't go on. Well, the slide's not in all the way. I, I just see now, I didn't realize that. But the slide is not in as far as it should be. So right now, the slide's not going out to the back here. So we've got to figure out why that's not happening. My guess is that there's just some debris in the, in the crack back here. The slide has to go right back here and it has to almost fit like, again, just like airtight. There should be no real obvious crack in that. I see some creeping crud back in here. I don't think this is the CA glue. I think this is stuff from earlier times. Let's see if it goes in there now. Not so much. It's close. It's a little better than it was but it still is bottoming out on something here. And it's, it's got, there's a pretty good gap in there. It's, the gap is a couple of thicknesses, I would say, of this X-Acto blade, at least a couple of thicknesses. So it's probably about a one millimeter gap, maybe a little more. So we're gonna fix that until we don't have a gap there. Well, each time it gets a little better, but I can see right here in the corner, there's some plastic that's not letting this go down in there, so it's the actual plastic itself, it looks like at this point. Well, it's being stubborn. I'm going to work on that some more and get this gap to close right here. Once I get that closed up, then we'll work on the ferrule end again. I've got that part fitting up pretty reasonably uh, well there now. It's really no air gap anymore. 
And then the next thing you do is you fit this on here, and then again, this should fit with no air gap. And it's wiggling right now because it's, it is kind of a gap right there on the front edge. I'm going to take this little tri-cornered file and get right in this corner of this, see if I can't cut back a little bit, because I think that's where it's holding up. I think that's probably going to do it. Wow, that improved it a lot. Now it's pretty tight all the way around. I think that's good enough for now. Uh, once we get the hair in there and everything, I mean, honestly, that's about as good as that needs to be. You know, you can always make them better. You know, no matter what you do, you can always do it a little better. You know, if I'm splitting hairs, there's still just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit right there. I think we're gonna be able to get that out with just a stroke or two more. And at this point, that's about all we can do. The little wedge that goes in here will help hold that in place and hold the hairs in place. And you can see just by putting that wedge in there, now everything's tight. So nothing would come apart there. That little wedge just spreads out the hairs, basically, is what it does. I'd say that that frog has been successfully rebuilt. Honestly, and I'm not bragging, but I would say just as little as five years, maybe six years ago, I would have said, no, throw that frog away. It's no good. You know, honestly, I think it's just as good as, as a new one now. It seems like it's going to be just completely fine. You know, if you really wanted to get anal, you could replace this piece of shell on the bottom here because it's been cracked and re-glued and it's not perfect anymore. Instead of replacing it and spending a lot of money and time on all that, I think I'm just going to file across the shell where it's not matched up real good and make it match up where the crack is there. File it down a little bit more flush and maybe even sand it a little bit. And I have a feeling that that's going to suffice. Um, I think that's going to be just fine, really. So I'll take a little bit of sandpaper now. Here's some 320. I'll just take a little piece of it. I'll sand this to smooth it out. And you can see there it looks pretty good. It's got a little line across it, but you can't feel it now. You can see it. You know, at least it's not obtrusive, you know, where you could feel it before with your fingers. Now you can't feel it at all. To me, I'd say that's good enough. We'll work on the other end of the bow on this tip now and see if we can't straighten out that and make that look better. I decided before going to the tip, I would go ahead and clean up the little screw here. I've got just a wire brush and I'm cleaning up the threads. The threads were really rusted on this. You know, obviously that's not good on a on a fine bow, you don't want rusted threads. This little ferrule that's here that has the threads on it, um, this would go in here like so, inside the shaft, and threads into this, and it's a little tight. And I thought if I you know, clean that up first, thread it through there a time or two, I've got it in there now, and I'm gonna put a little drop of three-in-one oil on this, and I'm gonna pull it backwards through that and pull the oil through that little ferrule there. And that's already loosened it up. I can feel a lot. Now the ferrule itself is brass, so it doesn't really rust, or at least it should be brass. All of them I've ever seen have been brass. That looks pretty good. Now we will uh, put this all, this whole assembly back on the bow itself so that it can stay together. It's a little tight. This should slide easier than this. So we may have to uh, loosen the ferrule a half a turn, perhaps. Because this is not sliding very easy and it should. So before I go loosening anything, I'm going to look at the ends of this and see if they're up a little bit and maybe they just need to be filed and smoothed off. I kind of think that might be our issue. I've got a little half round jeweler's file here and I'm going to smooth off the ends of this so that they're not dragging on the bow. And I think this end actually is bent and possibly dragging. And I see a real tiny bend here that I'm going to straighten out too in this brass. No problem, straightened it right out. But I'm going to 
file that now because I think it's sharp. To loosen this, I could turn this loose a half a turn, but I'm not going to do that yet. I, I'm hoping that by just cleaning that up, this will slide better. It feels like it should slide okay now. So let's just see how it slides once you get your screw in there. Hopefully not too tight. It's a little tight still. Oh, I put it in backwards. That's what happens when you turn the camera on, so you do dumb things. I put the frog in backwards. Okay, let's see how it slides now. It slides okay. Um, maybe with a little wax or something, it'll slide okay. I prefer to keep it fairly tight because it'll be snug. You don't want them loose. I think once we get a little wax on there, I think it'll be fine. So we'll do that. In fact, I'll just try a little bit of... Uh, I think I'm going to try a little bit of this Renaissance wax and see if that'll do it. I, that you know may not be a good choice because it dries hard over time. But I think I'll try that, see if that has any impact on it. If it creates a problem, it obviously could always be scraped right off. A little better. I won't say it's great, but it's better. You can see I can move it now, and it needs to be able to move fairly freely, but yet be snug. I think we're okay for that right now. There looks like there was probably a little inlay button on the end of this. I'm going to look these bows up and see what I can find about what should have been on the end of that. I know it's missing the uh, I guess you'd call it the grip or the leather in this area here or the wrapping. The grip is what most people call it. And it's missing that, so we may want to restore that too. But right now we're going to turn our attention to this end and see if we can't make this look better. You know, this was fitted, I would just say, sort of okay. It wasn't fitted well. And I think we can do a better job of fitting this and making it tighter, number one and making it more at the right angle, number two. And both of those things will make it stronger once we get the proper glue in there. In this case, the proper glue may just be CA glue because uh, that will hold you know, two uh, different substances very well. Probably better than just about anything these days. In my opinion, the top of this is not sloped enough and the bottom is sloped too much. So I'm going to just start by cutting the top angle down a little bit and seeing how that looks. That's a little better already. It, it, it definitely, I don't want it to come out and turn down. I want this to come out at the same angle that the stick is made. I think I'm going to work a little bit off camera here and try to develop a technique to make sure that that's going to work. I'm running into a little problem in making this tip fit the way I want it to. I've got it sort of where it works like this. You can see now that it kind of follows the angle of the tip. It's in, in other words, it's not leaning down like that. It's kind of fitting. But the problem is, on the underside, it's a worn spot. Now, I don't know if that was worn from just pulling down all these years like that, or if they actually filed it that way. And I kind of think they actually filed it that way, to be honest. I need somehow to fill in that low spot and take up that gap under there. So I've got to figure out something I can fill in that, that with. I may just use some sort of epoxy because it's going to be difficult to glue something to this weird shape and I, and I don't want to cut any more away. So I think maybe just an epoxy filler on the back side of this would be the way to go. We'll see how that works. As you can see I'm mixing up a little epoxy and uh, it's white which I don't like because the stick is not white obviously. So I'm going to see if it's possible to dye it with just a little touch of dye. Got some black dye here. I mean some dark brown dye. I'm just going to drop a drop or two of that in place here and see if it does anything. I don't know if it'll mix with this or not. It's not making it dark enough, I can tell that. 
it's going to take quite a bit more dye to do any good. We'll see how it works. I'm not too worried about the color because I can always dye it later. I'm going to just try to fill in this area right here because it's just not shaped right to make that ferrule fit well. So this whole side here, I'm just filling it in and then we can reshape it later. I think that'll probably do. I hope it does. We will see what we will see and we'll see that tomorrow. My friends, I have been working on this tip, trying to get it to fit the end of this bow really well. And I will say for sure that it's, at least in terms of the way it lines up, it's far better than it was. But I'm still not happy with it. I know it's not all the way to the depth because I can stick something in there and measure and tell that this is not going in all that terribly far. I'm only getting it in about that far and my opinion is it should be going in about that far. So it, I'm getting it about two thirds of the way in approximately. You know, it's almost impossible to figure out where it's rubbing. I keep spinning it and things like that, trying to see a wear mark. It's very hard to do. I thought the epoxy would help me on that because I did put some epoxy on the bottom side to kind of take up that worn out space. And that helped maybe a little bit. I'm not happy with it. I'm gonna work on that fit a little bit more before I get to that and get that locked in. This part here has all been glued into place and it's a mess. So I'm probably just going to take a Dremel tool and just Dremel all that mess out of there because it is a serious mess. I've been trying to pick it out and it's just like concrete. Here we go. All right, as I get it in there a little bit, then I can try poking other things in there and see if I can get it to pop out. And of course on camera, I can't find any of those pokey bits here. There it is. Wanted to see if I could slide an X-Acto knife in there anywhere, but I don't think I can. It's that tight. It's really tight. Getting a little bit there in, in place or two. Just gonna have to do some more Dremel tool. Well, I got the biggest majority of it out there that time. The glue started melting to the Dremel tool and that knocked out a lot of it. I think I can get most of it out of there now. It's cleaned up pretty well, but then again, I'll get in there and really clean it back to the bare metal. I believe this is aluminum, I'm fairly certain. And we'll get it all cleaned out and hopefully we can make a uh, a wedge that'll stick in there won't have to be glued. So I won't say that I wouldn't use glue. There's a good chance we may have to. Anyway, we'll do what we have to do to make this thing work. Because I'm having such a tough time fitting this in to there and getting it really tight, I'm gonna try something here. It may not be a good idea. I'm going to try a method that I've used for other things, I can't even recall what I've used it for, where you make wood fit a piece of metal. You heat the metal up and then you stick the wood in there. I'm gonna use this test piece first before I try it on the real bow. This is a piece of rosewood. I'm gonna heat up this a little bit. I'm not gonna get it real hot because it's aluminum. I'm not really sure how well that's working, but it seemed like that got tighter and tighter the more I did it. Seems pretty tight right now. It's hot, so it's gonna be hard to tell. I may try that with the uh, actual bow to see if I can get it to conform a little bit better to the uh, inside of this thing. I don't think it'll hurt anything if I don't go overboard and get it too hot, you know. I don't think it'll hurt anything and it may very well make it match up a little bit better because that did seem to fit that much tighter after I did it. Not sure how hot that is. That's fitting up fairly tight now and it wasn't before. I think it's got some potential. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Wish me luck. 
we're gonna try it. One of the hardest things is to get the alignment correct, so I'm gonna stand up and be looking down it, hopefully, to help help me align it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> thing's almost useless on anything shiny. It's saying it's just room temperature basically. I know it's hotter than that. I don't think this is helping all that much. I was hoping it would really help seed it right in there, but the truth is I don't think it's doing much. I'm hoping at least it will show me where I need to file some more. Perhaps it did that, but I don't know. The only problem is I don't want to file much more on the wood. I would prefer to file on the epoxy side. about getting it too short. I uh, have compared it with the other bow and it's still slightly longer than the other bow. So I think we're fine on length. That's about as good as I'm gonna get it. That feels fairly solid. That's the most solid it's felt since I've been doing it. One of my sayings is you gotta know when to quit. I think, even though I don't think it's perfect, I think that's where I'm gonna quit because uh, you know any little tiny amount you take off of it after you finally get it solid could change it completely. So I think I better just quit right there. It feels solid right there. I just have to learn to like that, I think. We'll see about gluing it up and moving on to the next step. You know, I'm actually kind of dreading doing this. This will either go right or it'll go wrong. I don't really have an option in between there, I don't think. And the first thing that's going to go wrong is that this glue is going to get all over me because it's already to the top of the hole here. So it's going to squeeze out and go everywhere. So hopefully I can hold it in this Kleenex and then deal with that later. Getting it lined up is the trickiest part of it. Getting it to stay in there is probably the second trickiest part of it. Oh my gosh, it's not working at all. I thought that would work really well and it didn't work at all. Attempt number two. I really thought the CA glue would hold this, but apparently not. We'll try putting a little bit more in there. I don't know how that CA glue gets on your fingers, but it sure does. It's amazing how it can get on your fingers. It's sticking to me really well, not sticking to this worth a darn. We'll back up and punt. Well, my friends, the first time I tried it off camera, it worked perfectly. So it's solid now. It seems like it's on there perfectly. I also built up the glue just a little bit around this outer edge to help hold it a little more, a little more support. But I think it's fine. I also cleaned it up with some uh, fine sandpaper to uh, get rid of all the tarnish and stuff. And it's looking pretty good. We're going to have to do some more work on the whole thing here to get it right and of course we're going to have to rehair it which is always fun but uh, i think we're on the downhill slide i probably will try to make some little decorative button for that hole there too to restore this just a little bit more might as well since we've gone this far